Amen. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Mark. It's beautiful. Meeting, meeting God in this hour, at this time, at this moment in prayer, I want to linger there. Don't you want to linger where the Lord is? Yes, I do too. And it has been wonderful to hear some stories of, of meeting Jesus for the first time. And I think I heard some say it's changed my life forever. It's changed my life at age 13, meeting Jesus for the first time. I uh, want us to be open to what God wants to say to you and me this evening. First, I have a little PowerPoint to show you. I just want to share the difference between salvation and sanctification or justification and a holy heart. And then I would like us to look in Matthew chapter 13 at a scripture. And I want to invite you this evening to, to pray with me. I, I believe God has more for you and me here and now, as we've just heard. And I invite you to pray with me this evening and respond to whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you this evening. So we heard stories about salvation, right? Of how Jesus came into our lives. And I just want to, there's some distinction between salvation and sanctification. And, and we, in salvation, we can see what Jesus does for us, that the Father sent Jesus to us. He, Jesus gave his life for you and me, for every person in the world. And in sanctification, it's what Jesus has done inside of us, from inside out, from our hearts out. What has he done in us? What might he do? Jesus came so that the Father and, and Jesus might send the Holy Spirit to live in us, not just walk with us as Jesus did, but live in us. I have three distinctions here. Here's the second one that deliver that salvation, in salvation, we see that we are delivered from the penalty of sin, that I am no longer guilty before God the Father because Jesus paid the price for me and you. Hallelujah. This is wonderful victory that we heard some stories about. Delivered from that penalty. And in sanctification, Jesus and the Holy Spirit deliver us, deliver us from the power of sin. I don't know about you, but I lived a lot of my life with that struggle between sin and no sin, following Jesus, yet pulled into temptation through to sin. And Jesus says, the Father has sent the Holy Spirit that we, we might be delivered from the power of of sin. Hallelujah. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced the Holy Spirit coming into you and setting you free and bringing you to a different level? Uh, Peter did. Peter, you know, followed Jesus for three years, right? And still, just before Jesus was crucified, Peter did what three times? Denied him. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Wait, this is Peter? Where Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church? But what happened in Acts chapter 2? The Holy Spirit came on Peter and he was different. He was changed. That power was gone. There was no more conflict. He was all in, 100% with Jesus, following Jesus. And uh, another uh, distinction I notice is that in salvation, we see Jesus dealing with our outward actions. Forgive me for doing this. Forgive me for what I have done. 
and in sanctification, we can see that the Holy Spirit deals with our inner nature, that God himself wants to restore the image of God in you and me through the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. So this evening, I want to invite you. I want to, not just me, but I want, I I believe that God himself is inviting us to live that full life that he has for us, that we might be filled with the Holy Spirit and live a life of victory. Okay? Well, let's look in Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew 13, we can see two different stories where Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. And you know, the kingdom of heaven is really life in the Spirit. It's life through Jesus Christ, from the Father above, in and through the Holy Spirit. So here in Matthew 13, verses 44 to 46, we see two stories. And Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven here. In Matthew 13, starting at verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away sold everything he had, and bought it. We see in this first story that the man was not looking for a treasure, but found it. And I picture it sort of like this, that he's at home and says to his ox, Bessie, let's go and plow that field. So Bessie is obedient and gets strapped in to the plow, and they go through the town greeting people, and then they start plowing that field. Okay, Bessie, here we go. Let's go. And Bessie pulls and pulls. And in that place, in, in the uh, Middle East, there are almost more rocks than there are, is dirt. So I could imagine that that plow gets stuck, and the man has to back Bessie up. Come on back, please. We've got to get this rock out, get the rock out, and throw it at the end of the field. And then, okay, Bessie, here we go again. So Bessie pulls and pulls. And yeah, oh, got to stop again. Back Bessie and get that rock out of the field. Throw it to the fence line. Okay, Bessie, let's go. And oh, here's another rock. Got to stop, stop, Bessie. He gets down, takes out the, the stone, but it's not a stone. Okay, Bessie, uh, time to go home. Uh, let's go home quickly. It goes through the city and says, uh, yeah, hi, folks, hi, folks, uh, good to see you. But he gets home and says, dear, dear, sell everything. Sell our house, our furniture, clothes, china, everything, sell it all. And I imagine she says, "Uh, excuse me, dear, would you just sit down, sit down and have a drink of water or something? No, no, really, I've found it, I've found it, and we have to sell everything. Um, I don't know what you would do in that situation if you had your husband come home and say something like that. But the story says they sold it all, all they had, and bought that field. But there's something interesting here. It says that in his joy, he sold it all. It wasn't a sacrifice. It wasn't a sorrow. But they sold it all for that one field, and they had a treasure, 
and I'm sure she was happy after that. Wouldn't you be? Matthew also talks about where your treasure is, there your heart is. A.W. Tozer says, here are, here are some things that point to what we treasure. Seven things. One, what we want most. Two, what we think about most. Three, how we use our money. Four, what we do with our leisure time. Five, the company we enjoy. Six, who and what we admire. And seven, what we laugh at. That will point us to what we really treasure. And Jesus is saying, sell it all for the one treasure. The one treasure I have for you, it's life in the kingdom. There's a second story here. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. In those days, pearls were like a, a mini savings account. So they would have leather pouches, and when possible, when they had a good year, they'd buy some pearls, put that in the leather pouch, and carry it. That would be their savings account right there. And so this man, I imagine, is a merchant who buys and sells pearls, kind of like a banker almost. And so he would go around to different places, looking at pearls, examining them, buying, selling, trading. He probably traveled quite a bit. Do you have any pearls, Pastor Darrell? No. Not on you, OK. Um, I won't go through the congregation, but you can imagine the merchant. He knew his pearls. I know very, very little about pearls, just that my wife does like a pearl or two. Um, so he would look and examine and look and examine. And I can imagine one day he looked at a pearl, and it was not an ordinary pearl. No, I don't think he did that, really, but I think inside he did that. Have you, have you sensed that joy of the Holy Spirit inside of you when you really find something, a wonderful treasure, the treasure of Jesus, the treasure of the Holy Spirit inside of you, filling you? Jesus is pointing in this direction. So I can imagine the merchant just quietly said, well, that's very interesting. I might be back. So he went home, traveled home, went into his home. Dear, sell everything, everything, our clothes, our furniture, our house, everything, please. And I can imagine she said, um, dear, you've been out traveling too long. Why don't you just sit down and have a drink? But we see in the scripture, he went away and sold everything he had and bought the one pearl, that one. I don't know if you would be willing to sell everything for the one. I don't know what you might be holding on to. I don't know what the Holy Spirit might be speaking to you about that has been a treasure for you or these different treasures for you, for me, that I would not be willing to let go. Some time ago, uh, pre-internet, I read a story that I now can't find, but it was a story, an experiment about a monkey. And this monkey, uh, they made very hungry. They built a box, put a hole, a small hole in that box. So, and in the box, there was a bunch of food that the monkey would enjoy eating. 
But the trick it was that that hole was so small, he could only get one thing out at a time. And in that experiment, the monkey reached in, this hungry monkey grabbed a bunch of that food and could not get his hand out. And they said, I remember reading that that monkey just froze there. Couldn't move. Wouldn't let go of all that stuff and just take out one thing. He could have just taken out one thing and been hungry one at a time. But just holding on to all that. And I wonder if that looks something like you and me. Just holding on to lots of things and just can't let go. I'm inviting you to let go. To sell out. I want to share with you, I wrote down four things that I'm, I feel I'm, I'm still holding on to. But this evening, I want the Holy Spirit to, to fill me. Don't you? I'm going to invite you to pray with me this evening that the Holy Spirit, as we let go of these other things, that the Holy Spirit might fill you and me tonight. Um, one thing I feel I am holding on to is my assets, the things I own, like money in the bank, like our, our condominium at Bethel Point, my investments, I mean, I don't have much investment, but we have some, and, and we, we get advice all the time, and especially in our AARP magazine, you have to save up for retirement, keep saving up, build that nest egg, and you know, that's something I, I kind of want to hang on to. <clears throat> I want to hang on, secondly, to uh, my professional covering. I've been a, an ordained pastor in the Free Methodist Church since 1987. I want to hold on to that. I, that's, that's something that helps cover me. And, and now at Francis Asbury Society for the last eight years, you know, when, when Jesus said, come follow me, he didn't promise any great security or investment system or any great organization that would be over their heads. It was just, just Jesus. And then Jesus said, wait, wait, Peter, James, John, all of you just wait in Jerusalem because I have a greater gift for you, the Holy Spirit, who won't just be with you, but in you. Would I rather have the covering of the Free Methodist Church and FAS or just Jesus alone? The third area I feel I'm holding on to is is my family. And I know God ordained family and puts me in family. Hallelujah. My, my father is here on the next hill at the Veterans Center. My mother-in-law is here. My wife of 43 years, almost 44 this year, we have three children, they're all married, and three grandchildren, two more on the way. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm a traveling preacher now, mainly overseas, and 
for two years, I've hardly gone anywhere. And so many things have shifted for me. And you know what I've been tempted to do in the last two years is just, just to retire to my family. That's, that's all I would do, is just be with my family. Now, again, I'm saying family's good, of course. God ordained family, but I'm saying my temptation has been to stop missionary work, mission work, preaching work, and just, just be with the family. I'm, I'm 63, I could, you know, start collecting a little bit of Social Security. And fourthly, I'm holding on to my time. I have, I have a schedule, I have a calendar, I, I make paper lists of things to do, and you know, I kind of look at that list every day and prioritize things on that list every day. Does anyone else do lists here today? Here, yeah. And, you know, I feel good when I get stuff done. And conversely, if I don't get some stuff done, I don't feel as good. And Jan will ask me, how was your day today? Well... I got these things done. And uh, I kind of I like to hold on to those things. Or do I show up in the morning and say, okay, Father, uh, here's my list, my calendar, my whole day. If you want to rearrange it, go ahead. I don't know what you're tempted to hold on to, but I've shared a few of the things I'm tempted to. But Jesus is talking about people who will let go and sell out for the one. (laughs) For the one. And we can see how Peter and others sold out for the one. And they were so filled with the Holy Spirit that that's then they had everything. Didn't they? Isn't that a wonderful story forward? As the Holy Spirit filled them, the power of the Holy Spirit worked through them and in them. (laughs) Do you think Peter carried an electronic calendar? What did he do? Okay, Holy Spirit, let's go. Here we go. Step by step. And in and through Peter, the church was built. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I invite you this evening to pray with me. I invite you to listen to the Holy Spirit. What's he saying to you this evening? What what would you be willing to let go? What would you, what would I be willing to give up? What am I holding on to? Does God the Father, does Jesus have something more for me here tonight? Might he fill me with his Holy Spirit completely? Will you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for speaking to us through your word. 
And Father, perhaps... <coughs> Perhaps there are some with me, along with me, who are holding on to things. And you're speaking to us to, to open our hands and let it go. Father, uh, forgive me in, in this these two years of being tempted to go on, on that comfortable route and thinking so much about the things I own and, and just being comfortable staying at home with my family and my time, my agenda. Forgive me, Father. I release all this to you. The Father, <clears throat> I believe some here are praying to you to be filled with the Spirit. Come, fill us, fill me. So we ask you, to do as you promised, and that is to send your Holy Spirit upon us. The kingdom of heaven is all about treasure, and the treasure is life in the Holy Spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit, we have you, Father. We have you, Jesus, living in us. Hallelujah. So I invite you brothers and sisters, in this spirit of prayer as we sing. If you'd like to pray here up front, please join me up front. Let's listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. What's, what's your last hold out, hold out here tonight? Is there something just still holding on to? Um, <clears throat> I spoke a message something like this in Michigan once and uh, a woman came to me and said uh, just in tears she's just crying this is way after the service out in the parking lot and <laughs> she's just crying and crying Jerry the Holy Spirit just filled me tonight I I opened up the secret part of my life. And she went on to say that as a child, she was abused. She got married. She was abused. She was divorced. She was abused. And she told me that she kept this secret part of her life blocked off from God just, just for her and she was I don't know probably in her 50s and she said Jerry with just joy <laughs> Jerry I've let the Holy Spirit come into that secret place that I've kept him out of all my life and she was just smiling ear to ear with joy so would you please listen to the Holy Spirit this evening? I welcome you to come to the front to pray if you'd like as we sing together. <clears throat>